Hi, I'm Ollie, Jack of all trades and Obtainium Engineer. And I'm here at the Fry's Forest Research and Development Workshop in the electronics room just here actually, uh, working on Celadary's 1968 Toyota Stout EV conversion. And this is the new motor controller from Kelly and it's a 72 volt 800 amp. So I think this has the capability and all the features to get the vehicle moving well. It's got to fit in here, and then we've got to get the box back in the vehicle. Let's get started. I've just put on the bus bars that I've made up to fit into the box here. motor control is now in the box and I'm pretty happy with the way it's mounted. Got all the bus bars uh, coming over to the contactor and to the, uh, the shunt and we've got a little tap in the middle uh, here between the contactor uh, and the controller to nick off out to motor pause. Tons of wires here that we have to hook up. I reckon it's time to put that back in the vehicle now. Just finished the respray and we'll be putting things back together shortly. We've got a motor controller that's now uh, in there and I'm just about to program that motor controller. We're just looking at the Mott Energy ME1004 brushed DC motor. Thanks for uh, giving it to us Guy Stewart, much appreciated. Uh, so I've just drilled a hole into it here. We're just going to put a temperature sensor um, that we've got here. A little bolt-on temperature sensor um, onto there and I've just drilled a bit of a hole into here and put in a thermistor for the motor controller so that we can tell what temperature it is. A thermistor is a someone I'm sure will correct me but I think it's some sort of resistor basically that varies its resistance based on temperature so it can be used as a temperature sensor. We've rolled it out in the sun here uh, to let the paint cure a bit uh, quicker because it's been quite wet and cold this, uh, this spring. Beautiful growing season, a bit difficult for painting. But we can't get this back in the workshop uh, unless this thing drives itself back in. We've been doing some wiring in the uh, motor control box. Quite a lot of time doing wiring in the motor control box. We'll jump in there in a sec. Still pretty hard to see, there's a lot packed into a small space, but we'll give you a bit of a look at that in a minute. Uh, but yeah, I'm hoping, hoping that we can do sort of smoke test number two and uh, turn this all on uh, very shortly for you guys. So, um, for me, for, to, for heaven's sake, to finish the project, <laughs> it's been, we were aiming for two weeks and I don't know, maybe it's week nine, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not even counting anymore, but uh, anyway, Let's have a look at the motor control box and uh, hopefully do a smoke test and see whether this thing will drive. We're pretty close to being able to turn this new Kelly KDZ72801E controller on. We have a whole lot of spaghetti here uh, that is all the control wiring and everything coming out of the controller and that's been taking a little while to wire up. Uh, we have a fuse here for our all our little things that are coming off the the 48 volt like the 12 volt DC to DC converter to replace the battery out the front and relays and various stuff uh, we've got our shunt down here which is measures the current coming through and we'll display it on the little battery monitor Victron Victron BMV uh, 712 yeah just fitting stuff in boxes takes yonks Anyway, let's get it fired up and see how it goes. Wait, Adrian did tell me fired up is a really bad word to use when it comes to electricity. <laughs> let's see whether we can turn this on and not have smoke or fire. 
Right, I'm going to plug in the fuses on the back. Oh yeah, here we go, we've got power up front. Oh yeah, I can see a blue light flashing inside there. Okay, Venus GX is up and running. Up here on the BMV, it's showing voltage. We've got 53.38 volts on the main battery. Let's check for pre-charge. So, auxiliary voltage is zero. That's because we haven't turned this breaker on yet. Turn that on. Voltage is coming up. So that means pre-charge is happening. Yep, pre-charge is just happening. So the relay in the BMV won't click over until it's reached about 46 volts, which it has now. And it's got to wait 10 seconds. And we'll probably hear it click. There we go, just heard a little click. Cool, so that means everything's pre-charged. I'm going to turn the key now, and we're going to get the contact to come on. Contact is on. Now, we should be seeing a little red light. Yep, and now it's gone green. I can see a little bit of green down there, which means the motor controller, the Kelly KDZ motor controller, is now happy. It should be good to drive. We've got a green light on the Kelly controller. We're all hooked up. Everything's looking good. Now it's time to see whether that throttle does anything. Put something in the comments down below that uh, whether you reckon we're going to drive off over here or whether <laughs> there's going to be another drama. <laughs> I'm certainly hoping there's no more dramas because it's like something like week nine. I thought it'd be two weeks. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> put, put, your, put your thought down below. But I'm hoping I get in here and drive off down that road. Let's see what happens. Righto, main power's on. Pre-charge is coming up. Once, okay, pre-charge is over 48 volts, the relay's clicked, I can engage the contactor. We get the red light while the controller boots, and it's got a green light. Now, the moment of truth. Does this Kelly KDZ controller and all the wiring I've put in, does it drive us forward with the Mod Energy ME1004 motor? in this 1968 Toyota Stout. What happens? It helps if you put it in gear. Well, it's a good test, actually. Sounds good. Should we put it in gear? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. We're driving away. Should we go backwards? Let's go backwards. I want to see how many amps. Whoa. See that? <laughs> it goes. It drives. Wow, it's pulling a fair bit of current. Ah <laughs> oh, man, this has been too long coming. <laughs> ah, finally. How good is that? We are rolling. What does that look like? Is that Tesla? Is that Toyota? The Tesla copy Toyota? That's looking really good. Oh, that's satisfying. Bit of a grubby window, but... Uh... Gonna put the bumper bar and stuff back on. Uh, Cause yeah, that was a heap of fun taking this for a little drive last night. I wanna go for another drive. So let's get a few of these bits back on and take it for another spin. Let's jump in the cab and take a spin and have a look at how it goes. I'm really keen to see, I want to see how, how many amps it's pulling. Uh, I want to, like, <laughs> I was a little bit distracted by the fact that it was just driving uh, <laughs> last night. So yeah, I want to start to have a bit of a look at how it's behaving. But yeah, let's just have another drive. Turn the key, click, goes the main contactor. 
And a little bit hard to get it into first, maybe just a tiny bit of accelerator. And click, and it goes, because no clutch. And, uh, press that. Woohoo! <laughs> ah, so good! probably get through this bump over here it's a little bit drastic we'll probably make a bit of a, a lump when we go through here oh, right <laughs> why don't we go up to the internet tower Goes up here. There's the internet tower. Oh, oh we left a bit of a mark going through there. That must have been the tow ball. And there's those other stouts. I'm sitting on the seat out of that. Uh, that's the one we saw in an earlier episode, that one on the left there. That's Mr. C.J. Parker's 1969 Toyota Stout from Wood End. Check out the earlier episode. We'll put a link in the description there to that one. But uh, yeah, we got a few parts out of that. Thanks very much, Mr. C.J. Parker. Poor old thing. Just derelict now. And we'll head back on over to the workshop. I wonder whether I can get a gear change in here. Let's see what I can... Oh yeah, that's not too bad. But no clutch. Ha ha! Woohoo! Oh, this is so much fun. Now, I probably won't have enough power to get up here, I'd say. We might do a quick gear change just here. I'll come to a stop because there's no synchro in first. Not breaking any land speed records here, but uh, it's fantastic. Now let's have a quick look at the power. Pulling six, well, it's jumping around a bit. But what do we got? Four kilowatts, five kilowatts, six kilowatts. And then it'll, down here, when we regen brake, it'll go negative. Watch this in a sec. Look at that, we're putting 1.3 kilowatts back in. Five kilowatts out. Oh, all that regen braking works. Doesn't have a heap of torque on these hills though, that's second. Oh, it's struggling. Yeah, it's borderline. Pretty cool, but it's borderline. Maybe we'll put a more powerful motor in the next one. I think once this has got to tow a trailer up hills, I think we'll find this is probably a bit underpowered. Oh man, it's so good to be rolling after two months in the workshop. So good to be rolling. Two months working on this beat.
Ha <laughs> ha! How good is that? 